Hey guys, it's Matt. Over the past two years, I've probably made about three or four videos about these movie reviewers, but this takes the cake in terms of how stupid these movie reviewers are. I've been nice to them up till now, but they're falling for it again. They're doing exactly what the system wants them to do. They complain about the same woke issues and social justice warrior issues that we don't like. So in a way, they're a little bit on our side. But guys, I mean, to fall for this, y'all a bunch of dopes. Uh, let me establish what this video is about, especially for the bot, and then I'll get into it. Let's just scroll through the headlines here. This seems trivial, guys, but it is another reality discussion, or at least will evolve into one. Okay, the big breaking news, less than 24 hours. Jennifer Lawrence says she was the first female action lead. Instant regret. Woke actress claims she's the first woman ever in an action movie. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence destroyed after saying she was the first female action star. Jennifer Lawrence claims to be the first female action star. And on and on and on. And this is less than 20 or 24 hours old. And all of these absolute dope movie reviewers are falling for it and continue to do exactly what the system wants. Maybe some of you, if you think this uh, is an appropriate expose as to how dumb these channels are, maybe some of you can go out there and leave a link to this. I guess it was a Variety magazine interview where she said, when I did the first Hunger Games, before that a man couldn't identify with a woman as the strong lead in an action movie. Of course, all the movie reviewers take the bait. How many more thousands of videos are coming over the next two days? It's not even 20 to 24 hours old where they're showing, what about Sigourney Weaver and aliens? And take the bait, take the bait, take the bait. Guys, if any movie reviewer has actually stumbled upon this or followed a link, obviously um, she was told to say that. Breaking news from the conspiracy crowd and the truth pursuers, the entire um, breadth of society and culture is engineered and almost entirely fake. And what I'm saying is such the antithesis of the worldview of anybody that has one of these channels or hangs out at one of these channels that may find this video, which I know there's a small chance of. Guys, I have to say this literally slowly to like a first grader because it just won't sink in. Like I was talking to Tony about Voyager. You know, remember that conversation a few ba weeks back? He didn't even understand what I was saying. I had to keep saying it over and over again. I was saying, I don't think there's anything out there called Voyager. It was such the antithesis of where he's coming from. It, like, it didn't even penetrate his reality bubble. So I'll say it very slowly for these people. Jennifer Lawrence didn't make a mistake. Jennifer Lawrence did exactly what she was told. Jennifer Lawrence followed a script. And the script was successful because all you dummies started to make thousands of videos about epic fail, epic fail. Jennifer Lawrence, it's all laid down on purpose. And they're saying, what? It, she gave the interview that she really believes that, that she's the, fr no, she doesn't. She, she, she gave the interview. No, she doesn't. She was told what to do by a system that is so well managed from the top if we, you and I, movie reviewers, we booked ourselves into the room together, you wouldn't know what planet you were on at the end of the weekend, spending the weekend in the room with me, with just my old Mac. Well, Matt, you're making, look at what you're doing following the script. You're making a video about it too. Yeah, here we go again with that. But my um, videos always fall back to defense against the dark arts, Harry Potter, defense against the not nilk, the tactics of our enemy. Remember? Yeah, the tactics of our enemy and how people fall for the same bullshit. And if anybody, I hear anybody else screaming, throwing their rubber duckies against the wall. Matt, um, the top movie reviewers, they know it's fake. They're, oh, that's possible. The very top ones may be system players themselves. And I'm not going to mention any names. Some of these, several channels have over a million subscribers. They act as the Pied Piper. They make a video, then everybody else follows along. And all the other ones follow along because they know if you can put two sentences together without a 10-second pause after the second sentence, if you can put two sentences together and your channel is just out to trash Hollywood, the new series, Rings of Power, you will go sometimes five to 10,000 subscribers up a week as your bullshit is promoted by this system. 
I mean, it is off the charts how bad some of these channels are that have between 200,000 and 400,000 subscribers. Just make a video and the system will promote it because it's exactly what the system wants. And people are like, what's the system? What are you talking? Can I, can I really bring people up to speed? 10 years of research in a Jennifer Lawrence video? Stealing part of the timeless words from Bill Cooper. If you believe that Jennifer Lawrence, in giving that interview, really believed she was the first female action hero in a movie via The Hunger Games, then, again, borrowing from Bill Cooper, you're one of the stupidest people on the face of the earth. Matt, you bow down to Bill Cooper. Don't you know he was this and he was that? And you've referenced Jordan Maxwell before. Don't you know this? And he's Freemason. No, I don't know any of those alternative viewpoints on any of these people. We take what we can from the many people that have contributed to our pursuit of truth. If you've listened to me for 10 years, hopefully you've thought 20% of what I present is total horseshit. So after this one last segment, we'll leave the movie reviewers behind the one or two or three that may have found their way over here. Yeah, if that. I hear you. Yeah, if if that. They don't, they don't they'll say, oh, that's the conspiracy side. They're a bunch of wackos. We don't care. You know, they won't come over here anyway. So it's more for you guys. But this is, you know, the I can't take it anymore with these people and how stupid they are. Well, simple role play. 45 seconds or less. Was it Variety Magazine? It was some big publication, whatever. And some channels are saying, well, it was an online interview and they've taken it down because of the backlash. Oh, it's all scripted, all by design. The Variety interviewer would have said, Jennifer, what you, what you just said there? Let's pause. Stop roll. Stop camera. Jennifer, you're, this is going to be a big problem. No, Matt, don't you understand? They'd want to get the scoop. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sure. Yeah, if things are the way they're presented to us. Oh, sure. Variety magazine would want to take that because, oh, she made a mistake. And then they'd want to completely have her, assuming it's real, of course it's not. They'd want to have her reputation trashed. So then Jennifer Lawrence, with 25 more years in her acting career, would say, I'll never give those sons of bitches another interview. Yeah, the Variety magazine person would, would you know, that's the first instinct of some people that listen to this. Oh, they'd want to latch onto it, Matt, because that'll, that'll promote their story. Oh, sure. And then lose the ability to ever interview Jennifer Lawrence again. That's the way we're told it works, why these movie reviews are so great in the first few weeks, because it's they get access, and if they don't say the movie's great, that's what we're told, then they don't get return access. It would have said, Jennifer, let's, look, you, don't want, you don't want us to go out with this. They, would, they want to be, if things are as they're presented, they'd want to get on her good side. Not like, oh, we got her now. Now we can really trash her so she'll never come back to Variety again. See what I mean? It's like, hello? Okay, let's move, leave these dummies, movie reviewers behind. There's no hope for them. And I, yes, I hear you one last time. At the top, there probably sits a few system players that manage this wave of engineered and on purpose Hollywood backlash. Of course, it's all engineered. So, yeah, if anybody's throwing rubber duckies, well, let's get into what are they trying to do with all this? What is the ultimate system goal at the very top, in the very top of the Ministry of Information that coordinates its bat phones with Hollywood and the smoking rooms and uh, uh, movie reviewers, if you're still there. Um, oh, did you, you thought it's all separate corporations and everybody's making independent decisions and it's not one giant collusion? Is that, is that what you thought? Really? Um, you are stupid. I, I got a great email a few months ago, probably three or four months ago at this point. I forget who it was from. It was from you. Uh, remind me it was from you. I'll give you a shout out. But it was basically that, let me, if I can remember the tone of it, it was, okay, Matt, it seems like if we don't really dive deep into this, that, of course, Hollywood and the system wants to push the woke agendas, and it wants to push the social justice warrior, and the diversity, and the LGBTQAI, and it wants to do this and that, and, and then it's ultra-liberalism, ultra um, which is the, the new modern communism, Matt, and, and how to take down um, democracies and all. Okay, it seems like that, but the email, in a, in a very short, uh, direct manner, said, do you understand what that does? It creates a backlash. It's simply a rubber band. And when you, when you push all of this sort of thing, you create, as usual, camps and hatred in those that oppose it, even camps and hatred at one's family's Thanksgiving table. We see it all the time. 
So if you if a pendulum swings too far out to one side, woke social justice war, social justice warrior diverse. Oh, okay, you, I don't have to keep saying that. You you understand? You've been paying attention to the news for the last ten years, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, and then it comes back violently and viciously the other way, like a rubber band. He's saying what they're hoping for is go watch V for Vendetta, go watch in the movie. V for Vendetta and that totalitarian regime, curfew after 10 o'clock. They, they want a gigantic snapback against this stuff. They want a reaction and, and potentially one, I can't say the words because of issues that I've had, but have you seen the movie Frankenstein in the old movie, Bot, Dong, Frankenstein, the in the black and white movie, Bueller, they went and got pitchforks and torches. And then they went to Frankenstein's castle. They're hoping to create, basically, they will, that will happen. It, it's as a reaction to the woke. And, the, and, and then what you end up with is the worst parts of the movie V from Vendetta, that sort of society that's ultra right. Okay. And I was like, yeah, when I read this, I'm like, yeah, that's it. They're pushing their woke diversity themes in such a way that it's obvious that they're trying to piss off millions of people. It's not like they're, this is what they want, so they're going to do it subtly. It's always up in your face. Those that are in the group being pushed, the, the pride group, okay? No, one, no group has been used in the history of the world, used and abused to fulfill the system's goals more than the pride group. Complete puppets, all of y'all that have gone along with it. And it won't be real fun. I don't, when this all play, it could take a hundred years for all this to play out. But they're not just, Matt, they want all these woke things in society. No, they want the opposite. They want the V for Vendetta regime, the hardcore right, the 1984. The only way to get it is by a snapback or a pendulum that coming back hard in the other direction because of a reaction, then then a reaction that's not very good that then needs to be controlled. Basically, what what is the uh, are they still holding hearings on Trump? Was it January sixth with the Capitol and all that? Oh, well, can you say a test? Or uh, obviously, I know, you know, most of that was um, cake in a lake and a cake and all. I mean, but there were still some people that got caught up in it probably that weren't completely uh, on the payroll put it put it that way the whole that's all a test and then a sampling and what are people saying about it and read the tweets read the emails check the thumbs up versus the thumbs down it's all the information from january 6th is being fed back into the whopper supercomputer so it can be used i think that's the date you know that capital storming horse shit nonsense um, then they'll, they'll use what they learn and then create scenarios that are much more real and a thousand times larger. If you're driving, I'll read this to you. Don't need to see it. Just a single screen capture from the side channel of his Nerdrotic Daily, 105,000 subscribers. Somebody sent this to me. I appreciate that you did. Shocking revelation, it says. They are destroying everything on purpose where Nerd Roddick is the host, and he has four or five or six other movie reviewers. I know sometimes the Critical Drinker joins him. There's a top right is that guy I've seen, Disparu, if that's his name. Many of them have, you know, 50 to 250,000 subscribers. Now, I thought by this title, Shocking Revelation, they are destroying everything on purpose. And maybe the person that sent this to me thought they'd be coming around as well. Matt, are... Are some of these movie reviewers actually coming around to what you said shortly after The Force Awakens, that's 2016, that this stuff has to be being made bad, the movies themselves being being made bad on purpose? You would think they'd have to be coming around with this title, but they didn't. Again, look at the title, Shocking Revelation. They are destroying everything on purpose, a roundtable of... Four, eight, ten movie reviewers. Well, Matt, they have to be coming around to what you've been saying now for many years. They don't. It's weird. I mean, they start talking about, they actually, do they bring up, what is his name, Yuri Bezmenov? 
that horse sh- even that horse should even eight years ago the truth community was like oh this guy yuri kgb he warned us and even then when i knew nothing about nothing i just breaking down the fake uh, bang events all day long it's all that's another one another one in a mall another one another one in a school that's all i did but it's like this year oh sure like a kgb agent is going to then he's going to go on tv and talk in public about how the how to bring down a western style capitalism and oh he'd be allowed to do that sure it's all part of the 50 to 100 year to 150 year master plan maybe yuri was completely legitimate but it doesn't mean then 100% he was used completely used like the entire pride group is used. I don't think in that in the case of Yuri, if he really was KGB, I don't think he was out there trying to help and they wanted him to say those things. But the point is, let's get back to this neurotic daily roundtable. They start talking about, again, they just can't quite understand it. And again, we're going to assume they're all legitimate at this point. If one or two of them are system players, okay, I'm aware that's a possibility. We, we can't keep going there. Most of those that make these types of videos as movie reviewers are not system players. Okay, maybe a few are as Pied Pipers, but they're talking about Yuri Bezmenov and long-term strategies on how to destroy democracies or take down capitalism. First off, if if this group here is talking about Yuri Bezmenov, oh, then Yuri Bezmenov was a gigantic plant. Whether he was used unwillingly or not, it's exactly what the system wanted, if even this group is aware Okay, so they start talking about that, and well, that's kind of stuff that we talk about in the truth community, but with a title like Shocking Revelation, they're destroying everything on purpose. Matt, there must have been a mention that they're out to make the, the, the content bad, not one mention of it. It was more along the lines of you have to have the woke themes and the themes that could potentially piss people off or piss an audience off inside the movie but not for a second did they go into an area where they're trying to make the movie bad. It was more along the lines, and they didn't even make it clear in this regard. I'm interpreting the way they make the strange presentation. It's more along the lines that they're trying their best, but the woke themes are going to be in there, and it will piss people off because that's part of this long-term Yuri Bezmenov strategy to bring down the West. But they're, they're going to try to make the best movie possible, with these types of woke themes because of it's uh, the modern, as t- my friend Tony would say, that's modern uh, communism. It's done under the guise of SJW and diversity and blah, blah, blah. That They didn't say one thing <laughs> about that, but they didn't even come out and say, they're tr- they didn't, it was like my interpretation of it. They didn't even come out and say, well, they're trying to do the best they can, but because these themes need to be in there, then it's going to make the, the movie bad. They didn't even do that. I mean, it was just bizarre. Again, one last time with this title, you would think you would think somebody would be coming around to what we're talking about. And The Force Awakens goes back to 2015. And why does it, out of coincidence, you have eight people, ten people interviewing here or talking amongst themselves, and four have a purplish magenta background? Is that normal in your room or studio. I mean, what are the chances of... It's just weird. Okay. Guys, as time goes on, I'm not sure, you know, this is this is a way off the theme of what we're talking about here, but there could be far less real people here in this in this reality, this environment we call Earth and what we, we could even fathom. I mean, you go back to the 1899 show and everybody's... All the NPCs on, on the Netflix 1899 are just throwing themselves off the back, railing. I mean, Matt, you're doing this breakdown on this, and every single, somebody's screaming at me, throwing rubber duckies. Every single one of these people is just a system player, an element of some kind that's locally animated to this realm of existence that is, is, and you're trying to argue with them, and you're trying to get through to them. And I can see how (laughs) ridiculous and futile that is if these, these people that we're surrounded by, whether it be this, Round table hosted by nerd. No offense, nerd Roddick. Um, you know we don't we don't know how many real people there are. I know. Don't no offense. You know I'm not. Don't think you're a replicant from Blade Runner. Be staring in the mirror for the rest of the week. But I don't know. Real people like the people listening to the sound of my voice. I can vouch for myself. Um, we've seen so much go over the heads 
of everybody around us that is now so obvious, I'm starting to think there's, it's not solipsism, which is we're the only ones in our reality. It is possible if we have a solipsism with kind of a shared sim, like the ending of 1899, where it could be a sol- a, basically a solipsism and you're sharing your reality bubble with the few other real people that exist. Now, that's the 144,000. I'm, You know what? I'm tired of hearing about the 144,000 in the truth community for 10 years. Is it in Revelations? I'm going to say Revelations. That's what I say. The book of Revelations. Well, that's not right. I don't care. That's what I'm saying. The book of, is that, I'm tired of hearing about the 144,000 and whatever that, that means. You know, here's what we know. We know Melvin P. and that whole ilk are not the same as you and me. There's that song again. We know that there could be system players or automatons or NPCs. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, guys. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's 20 people, but I don't think it's a billion or two billion either. I think I think the as the years go on, put it this way, the number of real people that are here, um, and I don't know exactly, what does that mean exactly, real people? I guess we'll talk about it some other time. But I think the number is going down and down and down. I think it's a lot larger than 144,000. But um, I'm really convinced at this point that everybody here is not the same. And it is for me to take uh, take offense when these 10 people talking amongst themselves about movie reviewers. I mean, it, what's the, if, if, who knows who these people are, or what they serve? And it, there's no point to it. You're right. There is no point to it. All we can do is keep noticing uh, for ourselves how reality works and then use that to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here for ourselves. You know, that's the purpose of this channel. You have to do that last bit for yourself. I will point out distraction tactics, not milk tactics, system plays, system players, deceptions. I'm an expert on the nature of how it lays down the trick. In order to do that, uh, I will return to the screen. And I'm sure people will get on me for this. Matt, you're talking about movie reviews and, oh, they just get enraged when I go back and, and talk about something trivial. I could do a hardcore reality video every single time with no screen elements, no triviality. Is that a word? I just made it up. If I have one video out a month, one a month, or say one every two weeks, but I do five a week some sometimes, because what ultimately there's people that are working or they're on a forklift or they're driving long haul trucking or whatever. And they understand that you can't do hardcore reality video every single time if you're doing five videos a week. You know, I serve those people that don't have uh, TV shows or they're not going to tune into Glenn Beck on the radio when they're doing long haul trucking or whatever. And sometimes it can be a little repetitive and sometimes we can go into the triviality if that's even a word like this. But so, okay, so be it. Okay, well, people get so enraged. If a certain topic, if I, if the topic or my video title has Britney Spears in it, maybe that not might not be for you. But in a few days, I'll be finished or the revision of the last conversation after a failed life, and you may be interested in that. Every single time you turned into Oprah and you and you did tune into Oprah, every single time is like, oh, I I just love the guest. Or if you didn't like the guest, you may have turned it off that day. It's the same here. That's why I try new things. I'm trying not milk travel tours, which most people seem to like. Might not be for you. We'll only do it once every two weeks or so. Go to a, visit a city together, a city that we'll probably never see in our lifetime or never get a chance to see. And based on what they're doing back to China, oh, they're doing it again to China. Again? They're doing it again to China. Does that mean, uh-oh, is coming back? Who knows what their plans are? We might not forget Smolensk. We might not be able to see any cities anymore outside of our Hunger Games districts. I'm in Hunger Games District 12. That's where Katniss Everdeen was. You're in FEMA Hunger Games District 5, potentially. We might forget Smolensk. We'll never be able to get outside of our district 
our Hunger Games district. So we'll do Not Milk travel tours. And it's not just to see the sights and to sit on a, a bust like a bird and poop on its head. It's to see how the Not Milk and the system makes its one world presentation in the same kind of way, rattling its cat toy in the same manner. Okay, guys, last image. And I won't do many videos over the next few years on this movie stuff review. I'll do 1899 and things like that on for a specific show. But in terms of how the movie reviewers are missing the boat or how stupid they all are, I you know, how much more of that can I say? And if anybody's firing rubber duckies mad, if they are NPCs of this system and they are not the same as you and me, and they are following a script, Yeah, it is like banging your head against the wall. You'll never get through to them. They'll never come around. They're simply fulfilling an agenda for the system itself, for the reality itself, or the dark part of reality. They know not what they do, and um, they're on a download of some kind. And yes, if that is the case, and it certainly appears to be, then it is, talk about the definition of futile, it's just that I've spent too much time here, this part of YouTube, the last four months because of my fascination with what the system was doing to the rings of power. Um, why should I be surprised? If it can take down the number one fantasy writer of all time, respected and loved, J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, etc., why would I be surprised? Because they did it with Star Wars, the number one most beloved movie. I mean, you do it to Tolkien in Star Wars then, I mean, you were talking about a hardcore pipe-hitting system. I mean, and it fascinated me how bad, how absolute trash. I mean, it, I've last, last time I'll say it in a long time, guys, first graders at an elementary school could have done Amazon Rings of Power better than that horrible show. And what fascinated me was the thousands of videos from these idiot movie reviewers not realizing that they were trying to destroy it and trying to put out a bad product. This movie reviewer community on YouTube put out thousands of videos on the same topics, the woke in Rings of Power and She-Hulk and everything else that was going on at the same time, and the Mary Sue aspect that the woman has to take a lead role and dominate the men, and LGBTQA, and all that, that stuff. Thousands and thousands of these videos, and not one of them at one time even strayed into some of the things that we look at and questioned that are they actually trying to put out a good product via everything else they're trying to do out. You can still put, the point is, you could still, if you gave me and the Dungeons and Dragons Club down at the elementary school the rings of power, and you gave us the budget, and you gave us the CGI graphic artist, and you had us storyboard it, we still, me and the elementary school kids, could still put out a really good product, even if the showrunners said we had to include the woke themes. See, the woke themes, nobody wants to see them, of course, but that does not make a bad product by itself. I mean, uh, this came to mind, and it is absolutely absurd, and you're going to laugh, but imagine if Terminator 2 <laughs> had a woke theme or a certain scene. You wouldn't throw the movie out, would you? You, you might fast forward through the scene, or let's say John Connor was, uh, he wasn't sure about himself, and he looked a little, okay, fine, you know what? It's still a damn good movie. We could still get it done, even if we had to include the woke themes. And the movie reviewers, these dopes, don't even say that. They don't say, well, the movie, they don't, they just don't give their opinion one way or another. They don't say that it's impossible to make a good product because you have to insert these SJW themes. They're saying the SJW themes ruin it, but they, without almost without saying, they, they, always have the foot forward that Disney and these other content creators are doing the best that they can. And then they have the same old dumb excuses that they hire writers that don't know the canon and the original uh, lore, or that they didn't read the books as the kid, as a kid, so they're not true fans. They go to the same scripts. And I hear you throw, if you're throwing rubber duckies, because they go to the same scripts over and over, there's only two possibilities where we're getting to the point where there's only two possibilities. One, that 
they're all system tools and they all know exactly what's going on. This is where I, you know, I don't, I don't think reality works this way. In fact, I'm sure it doesn't, but that is my opinion. You know, they're all in on it and they're all just out there. Every single one of these YouTube uh, movie reviewers, they all know what's going on, but their job is to lead tens of millions of people or hundreds of millions of people into a certain direction where camps are created and they fight with their family and friends and they hate each other over the Thanksgiving table. Or the other possibility, either they're all in on it or they're literally not the same as you and me and they are on some sort of download or frequency or they could be an NPC of some kind and not the same spiritual being that you are. Because at this point, um, we are... Rings of Power... uh, Not Rings of Power. The Force Awakens 2015. So we are at least seven years into everything being destroyed across the board, not just with woke themes, but with just horribly bad content that nobody likes. And it keeps happening hundreds and hundreds of times over and over. And at this point, they still can't see that it is all on purpose and by design. We're at the point now, either they have to be you know, Matt, there's a lot more people that manage these movie reviewer YouTube videos that are system players. You're, you're, you're naive in that area. Oh, maybe I am. But it's, it doesn't really matter. It's either that or they're simply, there's some sort of automaton NPC that will always, the download and frequency of what they receive through the airwaves, that's maybe transmitted through the Schumann residence, or how, how we don't know how the download works on people, why everybody marches to the same tune, why they can't see the obvious things that we can see. We don't know the mechanism or the technology, but they're either all that, which means they're not the same type of being or entity that you are, a real spiritual entity, look, in my opinion, eventually will be able to see through this stuff. But I guess we'll reserve that conversation for another another day. Um, the point is, and I'm not going to talk about these these movie reviewers much again. I really am not. One, to, one or two times over the next two years, something will happen where I'll have to mention it or make fun of them or criticize them or just get a laugh at their expense or at least get some of my frustrations out, as I'm potentially doing here. But, you know, after The Force Awakens... Then we saw it with the Terminator, Dark Fade, and I mean, just one franchise fell after the other. Everything got horrible. And I don't know, three, four years in, I said, how many years have to go by where these people are going to keep saying the same things? And now we're seven years into it. And these absolute idiot movie reviewers are saying the same things. They're putting forth the same excuses. They're running the same scripts. And I, I'm sorry movie reviewers no i don't think a real person a real person people can be fooled but after seven years and now with jennifer lawrence where it's obvious uh, she's just running a script and she didn't really say that and she doesn't really believe she's the first action hero now you all think she made a mistake and you're making videos about the reaction well matt you're making a video about the react okay but it's for a a larger uh, reality lesson hopefully that I'm trying to communicate with the words that are coming out of my mouth. I didn't get to this last image now, so let me just do the last image. It looks like they're doing the same thing to the remake of Willow. Is anybody surprised? Let's go through the headlines here if you're driving. Um, Willow, you know, the new Willow, I, I, you remember that from the, it's 30, 40 years old. In a way, it, they ruin it in the modern era, but then it's also stalled century. There's a stalled century element by bringing all of this back as well. No doubt about that. I I haven't talked about that. Willow destroyed by Disney woke. Bob Iger speaks. Next one. Willow is a woke disaster for Disney. Lucasfilm destroyed by fans after focusing on LGBT romance. And then it looks like Willow, the little caption in the picture, he screams out, everyone is gay. This is bad, it's, it says. Disney drops woke. Disney admits woke content destroyed the company. We'll drop woke programming and virtue signaling. Oh, sure. Destroyed the company. Who put that out? The quartering. Oh, over a million. I can pick on the quartering because over a million subscribers, um, when you're that large, you know, you, you're free game to be 
picked on. Look at the amount of them I'm picked on. And, you know, and I only have 80 some thousand, over a million, the quartering. Um, it, what does that mean, the quartering? Are you, are you a Pied Piper, the quartering? Do you really believe this, that Disney just doesn't know how to make a show? Or will one of you guys eventually finally come around and say it's obviously on purpose? I don't think that will come from the quartering. Disney's Willow, dead on arrival. Are you surprised? Nerdrotic Daily. Just running the Nerdrotic, Critical Drinker, Quartering, Disbaru. Even, I like Just a Guy, whatever it's called. I think it's called Just a Guy. Uh, seems like a cool dude, but you know, you're running the same scripts and you're doing the same things. And, uh, you know, like YouTube will continue because I've looked at this so much over the last four months because of the Rings of Power. YouTube will continue to feed me this, but I will do my best to stop stop looking at it. And I've had enough of this. These people will not change. They're either some of the dumbest people on the face of the earth. They're working for the system itself, or they are not the same as you and me. And they literally are operating on a frequency and a download. And therefore, they will never be able to see the truth. It's one of the three. Before we are talking about it, it was only two possibilities. The third possibility is they could be dumb of the dumbest people on the face of the world. How dumb are they, Matt? They're they're doing YouTube content where YouTube is promoting it at 10,000 subscribers a week. I guess that's not so dumb, I guess. But ultimately, yeah, it's not that dumb, I guess, if you don't care about truth and you only care about clicks. So... I'll show you my, what were, the last time I show you my subscriber numbers, 450 to 600 a month. <laughs> Four, 450 to 600 a month on how many millions of minutes watched that month? Like I said, if I threw, if I just put my um, YouTube channel on an iPad and I threw the iPad out the window of my car into the rain, it, there would be more subscribers than what I get through YouTube promotion. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, it's even those of you uh, that watch. I mean, you, I'm sure some of you have sent something to a cousin or a relative. And of course, that doesn't work because it, what I put forth is immediately rejected by those around us that don't see the world like we do. But just to make a point, you know, if I, if I hung upside, upside down with a rope and spray painted a bridge <laughs> with the name of the channel, there should be more subscribers per the millions of minutes watched per month than what I get. But hey, maybe some some uh, advice you guys could, you know, I, I don't know, this party is a little crowded, what these, these reviewers do. But uh, hey, you start trashing Hollywood, you're good for five to 10,000 subscribers a month, at least. I, I remember the Critical Drinker when it was... 170,000 subscribers, six months, well over a million. Now he does put out a good product with a, but it's, it's not genius is a script of some kind. Um, there's the same sort of humor. There's always a scatological references. That's reference to poop. Always, you know, that I'm starting to wonder about that. Honestly, there's always a scatological reference. If I'm getting that word right with the critical drinker, there's a, a or a or a, or some kind of poop or throwing up or but it's mostly about poop and you know what that's all about i don't know guys i'm starting to wonder i'm starting to wonder why there's so much focus on the hiney there but uh, every time i sit down with like oh critical drinker great i'll open my chef boy rd and it's like um i don't know it'll say something like really gross about about the hiney and uh you know hey i don't know We'll leave that alone. Thanks, guys. I will probably not make a video tomorrow because I want to put the finishing touches on the rewriting of the last conversation after a failed life. You know, and, and this is fiction, guys. I I don't believe there's any... I don't want to get into a huge conversation when I'm trying to wrap this up on no consequences, con consequences, people. Uh, it's something that will judge your life. It is fiction, the last conversation in a failed life implies you can fail, but it's more about showing the person that bitches and complains, like how could we be expected to accomplish anything in that life where we came in with a mind wipe? 
and that person has shown you had a you had a lot of chances in your life to wake up to how things really work and wake up to your true nature. And then I bring that demon character back and it's fiction, okay? It is it is much more fiction than the other one which is the last conversation you had before you were born, which to me is much more in line with my understanding of truth, not that I believe I had this spiritual master that, you know, talked to me before they sent me in to my mother's womb to be incarnated, but but the first conversation after a failed uh, life is much more science fiction, just to get people thinking in a, in a big way, than the last conversation before you were born, which is much more in line with my personal belief set. So I might, if I have to finish writing it, or the revisions on it, it's been written years ago, but there's major revisions necessary. I'm almost done them, but then I have to re-record it, which takes, <laughs> this one, I mean, this will probably be an hour and a half recording, so hopefully Saturday, if not, you know, I'll change it up and it'll, it'll just be a few more days then for that one. Thanks, guys.